A terrifying journey into the mind of a serial killer, Ted Bundy. Summon your courage for a chilling journey through Ted Bundy's killer mind. In this video, we will explore what drove Ted Bundy, a seemingly ordinary man, to commit violence, assault, and even murder. This true crime story unfolds one of America's most infamous and unique serial killers. From his charismatic facade to his heinous acts of killing women. So be alert as we enter into the realm of his monstrous crimes. Are you brave enough to confront the horrifying truth? Every villain has an origin story. So let's unleash the captivating tale of the master of deception. He was a man whose charm and intelligence concealed a chilling secret in the 1970s. Bundy initially appeared to be an ordinary individual. So what drove Ted Bundy from an ordinary childhood to a life of unspeakable crime? At age three, his aunt saw him keeping butcher knives under his bed and later found it amusing. Ted's mother, Louise Cowell, was pregnant outside of wedlock. He was lied to and led to believe that his mother was actually his sister. He was lied to that his grandparents were his real parents. He hated that his so-called mother, who was actually his grandmother, was a weakling. He had seen his grandfather violently hitting his wife after indulging in whiskey. He later got to know about this truth, but no one knows exactly when that occurred. Ted was also addicted to his grandfather's adult content collection that led to his weird obsession with women. He faced bullying at school, which in turn caused him to start bullying other kids as well. Could he be a different person if he had been stopped there? No one knows exactly when he started killing. Evidence suggested he abducted and killed an eight-year-old girl when he himself was just 14. He traversed multiple states, leaving a trail of fear and devastation in his wake. How did Bundy conceal his true nature? One of the most disturbing aspects of Bundy's crimes was his ability to deceive and manipulate those around him with his charming personality. He often posed as a friendly, trustworthy individual. He targeted young women in their late teens or early 20s. He often approached them in public places while faking an injury to gain their sympathy and lure them in close enough to him to be bound or kidnapped. The depths of deception while utilizing his handsome looks and charm were unparalleled. During his college years, he met his first love, Stephanie Brooks, and tried to suppress his violent desires, but ended up getting dumped for his weird behavior. So what else could he think of? If his nice side couldn't make him happy, why not turn back to what he really wanted? Well, how did Bundy's acts become increasingly brutal over time? He indulged in watching adult content and stealing. He was even ashamed of his adoptive father. He wanted to be rich and famous. Behind the facade of a charming law student, Bundy lived a double life. He even worked for a suicide hotline crisis center. He saved lives of many depressed women by counseling them for hours over the phone. On the other hand, Bundy's crimes were marked by a chilling, ritualistic nature. He was engaged in extreme violence, torture, and brutality. Kidnappings, sexual assaults, and murder formed the grim tapestry of his actions. They extended to necrophilia and mutilation of about 12 victims. His disturbing obsession with preserving souvenirs of the women he killed serves as a haunting testament of his hard work. He later claimed he sometimes revisited his crime scenes and sexually abused the corpse again and again. He had killed about 30 girls from 1974 to 1978. They were all white college girls with straight black hair and parted down the middle, just like his first girlfriend. Another indication of his obsessive criminal mind, but no one ever suspected him. So what led to the fortunate escapes and missed opportunities that allowed Bundy to continue his killing spree? Bundy's ability to manipulate authorities led to missed chances and tragic consequences, 
From narrow escapes to brushes with the law, his cunning tactics and ability to blend into society played a pivotal role in his reign of terror. But it was pattern and testimonies that dug his own grave. It was about a man with casts in need of assistance near Lake Samish Park. His 1965 Volkswagen Beetle had no front seat and no passenger side handle. Ted Bundy was initially arrested in August 1975 in Utah, but managed to escape custody twice. He was finally apprehended in 1978 in Florida. So how did Bundy's trial captivate the nation and shed light on the mind of a serial killer? How did he end up? His trial referred to as the trial of the century gripped the nation. Bundy, acting as his own attorney, attempting to manipulate the courtroom. Many women became like fans of his, writing him letters while incarcerated and expressing their undying love for Bundy. He also proposed to, and later married, Carol Ann Boone during his trial. He even had a daughter named Rose with her. He helped police to capture the Green River Killer during his conviction. The proceedings shed light on Bundy's tactics and understanding the mind of a serial killer. His trial concluded in July 1979. He received three death sentences in two trials. He was found guilty of multiple counts of murder, kidnapping, and other charges. After Bundy received the death penalty, he was executed in the electric chair in January 1989. His case sparked discussions in criminology, psychology, and law enforcement practices. Let us know in the comments. Which aspect of Bundy's crime sends shivers down your spine? Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.